Amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 161, printed in Part A of House Report number 118-216, offered by Mr. Gates of Florida. Pursuant to House Resolution 723, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Uh, this is an amendment to prohibit the transfer of cluster munitions pursuant to this legislation. And I'd like to begin by yielding two minutes to my distinguished colleague from California from the Armed Services Committee, someone who has led this Congress to try to stop the tra transfer of cluster munitions, uh, the gentlelady from California, Ms. Jacobs. The gentlewoman is recognized for two minutes. Well, thank you, Congressman Gates, for your partnership on this important issue. Many of us have this idea of American exceptionalism, that America is set apart from the rest of the world. Well, that's certainly true when it comes to cluster munitions and not in the way that we want. America is an outlier. We are one of the few countries that hasn't become party to the Convention on Cluster Munitions, and that is a grave mistake. These weapons maim and kill indiscriminately. In 2021, the Landmine and Cluster Munitions Monitor found that over 97% of casualties from cluster bomb remnants were civilians and two-thirds of those were children. That's because these bomblets are small, colorful, and interesting shapes, so to children, they look like toys. So when kids find these unexploded bomblets stuck in trees or in the water or simply on the ground and try to pick them up and play with them, they can lose a limb or their life in the blink of an eye. And unfortunately, there's no amount of guardrails or promised precautions for cluster munitions that are enough. These weapons are unpredictable, and the human cost is far too high to justify. Now, let's be clear. This isn't about one country. This is not about Ukraine. This is about protecting civilian lives and ensuring our national security all over the world. Because sending these weapons anywhere makes us complicit in unavoidable civilian harm and creates blowback that undermines our national security. Our partners and allies look to us and expect us to do the right thing, to protect the marginalized, defend human rights, and strengthen democracy. This reputation is what allows us to build and maintain international coalitions that further our goals. But if other countries don't look up to us and don't expect us to do the right thing, we will be alone on the world stage. So I urge my colleagues from both sides of the aisle to avoid all of these horrific consequences and support our bipartisan amendment to ensure that no funds can be used to transfer cluster munitions. Thank you, Congressman Gates. I yield back. The, the gentlewoman um, yields back. Nope, nope, I reserve. The gentleman from Florida reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? I'm not sure I claim time in opposition. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I rise in opposition to the amendment. Artillery has been a critical part of uh, Ukrainians' fight for survival. Cluster munitions fill a, a, a needed gap right now until the U.S. production and inventory of 155 munition ammunition can catch up. The Russians have been using cluster munition for a year and a half, from day one. We should not limit the Ukraine's ability to fight the Russians. I also note that there must be a commitment for all parties involved to clean up any remnants after this war ends. But this amendment goes beyond prohibiting the transfer of cluster munitions to Ukraine and would tie our hands in future conflicts. It's not hard to imagine, unfortunately, a situation where we might need to transfer these munitions to our allies and partners, for example, during a conflict on the Korean Peninsula or over Taiwan. Finally, the amendment may prevent the department from transferring these munitions among the military services, limiting the flexibility to support our warfighters. So I urge a no vote and yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. I would observe that we, we cannot have a goal of creating parity with the Ukrainian military and the Russian military. If that's the case, why not send nuclear weapons? These cluster bombs are indiscriminate. They've killed tens of thousands of people. And you just heard my colleague say that when this is all done, we'll be right back here on the floor appropriating money to demine the cluster munitions that we're now sending. Which, which seems ludicrous to me, but I, I, would, I would love to yield one minute to the distinguished ranking member if she has any thoughts on the matter. The, the uh, gentlewoman from Minnesota is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise in support of this amendment. The decision by the Biden administration to transfer cluster munitions to Ukraine, in my opinion, was unnecessary and a sad mistake. 
Congress has been clear in prohibiting the transfer of any cluster munitions with a dead rate greater than 1%. The legacy of U.S. cluster ammunition into the battlefield in Ukraine undermines our moral authority and places the U.S. in a position that directly contradicts 23 of our NATO allies who have joined the Joint Convention on Cluster Munitions. The legacy of cluster bombs is misery, death, and an expensive cleanup after generations of use. And I've been in Laos and worked with other countries to clean up this legacy. As has been pointed out, the U.S. pays tens of millions of dollars annually to remove cluster munitions from Laos, Vietnam, era, as these are remnants of war. They continue to kill and maim civilians as we are here today. As a strong supporter of the Biden administration's policy in Ukraine, I must state the strongest possible terms, my absolute opposition to the U.S. transferring cluster munitions. These weapons should be eliminated from our stockpiles. The gentlewoman's time has expired. Reserve. I reserve. The gentleman has the only time, so oh, I, the gentleman is recognized. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I appreciate the bipartisan support for this amendment. I would also uh, want to thank Mr. Massey of Kentucky and Mr. McGovern of Massachusetts on the Rules Committee for having made this amendment in order. And uh, I look forward to us working together to ensure that we've got humane policies when it comes to our munitions. And just to respond to the argument that there's somehow a, a Taiwan nexus here, I study the war games and the plans around Taiwan pretty extensively, and I have seen no scenario in which we believe that the appropriate uh, utilization of munitions in Taiwan is going to require cluster munitions. It's largely going to be torpedoes, uh, sea mining, but cluster munitions uh, certainly uh, have, I mean, we're still demining the cluster munitions in Laos. So we can make, I think, a wiser choice now, uh, and one certainly that doesn't put any of our allies in jeopardy. Uh, thank you. Madam Speaker, I encourage adoption of this bipartisan amendment, and I yield back.